Hello everyone, in this video tutorial I'm going to show you a refactor of determination. This is video tutorial one. So uh, uh, this R refactor determination is important for uh, determining the uh, soil loss and sediment yield uh, from uh, the study area watershed. So uh, research on soil erosion and its effects on agricultural productivity uh, have been started early in 1930s. Uh, the purpose of these uh, videos are uh, to estimate the soil loss and sediment yield from a selected watershed using ArcGIS and uh, revised universal soil loss equations. So let me show, let me tell you something about uh, Russell. Russell is uh, an equation used to determine the soil loss and uh, sediment yield from uh, the given watershed or selected watershed. So uh, this equation uh, involves uh, around five pa input parameters. The first one is rainfall erosivity factor. Uh, the second one is soil erodibility factor, and the third one is slope length gradient factor. And the fourth one is crop or vegetation factor. And uh, the fifth one is uh, supporting uh, practice factor. So the three, as those LS, C, and P, are dimensionless uh, factors. The other uh, two, as that is R factor and K factors, are with dimensions. That means for R, MJ, MM hectare per hectare per year. That is for K, MJ, MJ per millimeter. That is R factor. Uh, it is uh, the energy of erosive agent water. That is precipitation, uh, which dismantles the soils from its parent material and represented uh, by the rainfall erosivity factor. So we we uh, represent this erosive. Uh, power with uh, R factor. So R is uh, the average annual summations of EI30 values in a normal year's rain, where uh, EI30 is erosion index, uh, which is a measure of the erosion force of a specific uh, rainfall. From this EI30, there, there are two terms, E and I30, where E is total storm kinetic energy per unit area, and uh, I30 is the maximum 30 minutes uh, rainfall intensity so e uh, which is the total uh, storm kinetic energy per unit area uh, can be correlated with the uh, rainfall intensity that is uh, hourly uh, basis uh, according to Schmerz and Smith uh, relates intensity rainfall intensity with uh, total storm kinetic energy that is e using uh, this equation this equation so uh, r uh, can be uh, calculated with the summations so average summations of uh, this EI30, E times uh, I30. So uh, as you can see, uh, R can be uh, equated in such a way, generalized can be in, uh, using this equation. So uh, according to this equation, K is the numbers of individual storms up to M. It might be M uh, storms. So after sum up, uh, so, uh, we need to also sum in a yearly basis. So uh, finally, we need to uh, divide uh, the numbers of years, that is uh, small n, according to this equation. So we can uh, determine in such a way uh, using this equation. First of all, we need to sum up those uh, erosion indexes, uh, that is, uh, so it means uh, rainfall intensity with having a uh, storm kinetic energy. So we need to sum up uh, those values, the daily basis, so in a monthly or uh, in a yearly basis. So after uh, summing up uh, in a yearly basis, we need to divide uh, those uh, summed values with the total numbers of years. So in such a way, you can uh, determine uh, this R factor. Examples of uh, storm hydrograph. This is 30 uh, minutes rainfall duration. Storm hydrograph, height hydrograph. So uh, we can uh, we need to prepare in such a way. So in order to determine the I30, so after uh, so storms having uh, less than 0.5 inches are not included in uh, the erosivity computations because these storms generally added uh, little to the total uh, R factor value. So R is uh, an, indication, an indication of the two most important characteristics of a storm determining its uh, erosivity. The first one is amount of rainfall and peak intensity sustained over and uh, extended uh, period. So calculations of R factor is uh, a complex process and uh, involves uh, the collections of uh, use of data. It, it needs uh, huge uh, data, uh, so it, this makes uh, computations of R factor uh, is a um, complex process due to uh, the need for a vast uh, yearly data. 
So rainfall intensity uh, data is not typically and readily available for many parts of the uh, globe. So for these reasons, many uh, many attempts uh, have been made to estimate our uh, factor factor uh, as a function of mean annual precipitation. So in uh, Honduras, uh, these two persons, Schwager and Smith in 1997, correlate our factor with uh, an mean annual uh, precipitation using uh, this equation uh, with a statistical uh, R square value of uh, 0 0.86. They uh, approximate uh, with this equation, and this equation uh, will be used uh, to determine our factor in Honduras. The other is uh, in Italy, uh, Tori uh, in 2006 correlates this R with a P equation in such a way, and uh, this equation can be used uh, as uh, to determine R factor. The, the other is in the United States, uh, there is continental US. In continental US regions, according to Reynard and uh, Freeman 1994, uh, they uh, found this equation, which is used in uh, continental US regions. Uh, having 0.81 R squared value. So uh, the final part is determining that factor using ArcGIS. So uh, it's, this involves the following steps. The first one uh, is we need to calculate annual rainfall of nearby stations. We need to prepare stations. We need to select stations more than five uh, for better interpolation. It will be uh, good to have uh, as, may, as much as many uh, stations. So these calculations of um, mean annual rainfall of nearby station includes uh, the following steps. The first is sum, uh, sum up uh, daily rainfall of each year for a station. So we need, uh, we need to prepare this uh, yearly rainfall data, which is obtained by summing up uh, 365 days rainfall total yearly rainfall is to get uh, this and uh, the, ne the next one is the second one is uh, summing up uh, those uh, yearly total rainfalls and divide them, uh, those uh, total number total rainfalls of uh, each years by uh, total numbers of years so we'll do uh, for each station likewise uh, after doing this the second step is we need to select uh, interpolation techniques. According to uh, literatures, uh, I have uh, read uh, ID uh, W methods of interpolation techniques is, is uh, the best in uh, interpolating those uh, rainfall data types. So uh, we need to interpolate these uh, rainfall, uh, in annual rainfall. So we need to prepare also uh, area and rainfall raster map. Final um, step will be uh, computing or using an empirical uh, early established an empirical uh, equations. So this is the last step. So I'll go straight uh, to uh, ArcGIS. In doing uh, such kind of uh, computation, we need to prepare data. So for determining our factor, we need to, need to prepare station data and uh, watershed map. So we need to prepare uh, station points. This station data is point uh, point feature. The uh, other is uh, watershed is polygon uh, feature. So we need to prepare those two uh, data uh, types. So station data includes. I will show you by opening attribute table. We need to uh, prepare stations in such a way. This is uh, this is station names. This is mean annual rainfall. Uh, this is uh, x and y coordinate. We need to prepare this and we need to uh, open in arc map. This is uh, important. We can also label features here. This is a mean annual rainfall of uh, nearby stations for this uh, watershed. So uh, this is, the second step is uh, I have already summed up daily rainfall and uh, so after that, mean annual rainfall is prepared by dividing the total numbers of years in annual rainfall. So uh, I need to select the best interpolation techniques. Open this one. So let me show you. Spatial, you need to go to a spatial analysis uh, analysis analyst tools. So from this, there is an interpolation here. So IDW, cringing. Natural neighbor, natural neighbors, blind topo raster. These are interpolation techniques. You can also search here IDW. 
but here uh, we have two options you, to, you, can, you can search or you can use arc toolbox uh, so open this one so input uh, point feature is station z value is rainfall z is rainfall that is needs, needs to be a report for an interpolation output raster should be saved here saved in IDW in this folder open it give it a name ID W1 so press here okay this is a uh, This is our watershed, so this is the uh, interpolated value. So you can uh, mask using this uh, shape file. So um, the final step is we need to compute also uh, this R factor. So in order to do uh, determining R factor, we need to open uh, map algebra here. Uh, we need to uh, calculate the raster so raster calculator open that is the same window as uh, the same window in the special analysis tool there is map algebra there is a raster calculator open it so we need to uh, equate this equation minus eight point this one this one so minus minus eight point one two plus bracket bracket times here where p is p is uh, this idw delete this one double click so close the bracket select uh, the output uh, location so we need to create a folder r factor we need to save our r, r factor value in here r factor raster save here so click here this is our R factor so we can uh, extract uh, R factor based on our, our study uh, area only so you can uh, extract by mask click here type extract or uh, here extraction there is an extraction here same toolbox so extract by mask double click this one input raster or factor uh, this is the white so uh, you can name as r factor one here are Okay, so we have extracted our factor, remove the rest. So, properties here, as you can see, you can display, you can symbolize a uh, classified value. Apply. Okay, this is our uh, R factor value. So, in such a way, you can determine. Your R factor. Uh, this is also the you know, total generalization about uh, R factor. This is all about for today. Thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe, like, share. This is uh, vital for your uh, future thesis or uh, research. So we can uh, determine, you can determine in such a way. Thank you very much.